Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Are you having problems managing, organizing, and browsing thousands of photos? Just like this individual who says he has 200,000 photos and hundreds of hours of video but doesn't know what photo manager to use. Or this person who has over 75,000 photos but doesn't want Adobe or any subscription software. Well, if you're in a similar boat as any of these individuals, do stick around as we're going to be doing a comparison of two leading raw editors who happen to have very capable photo managers, On One Photo Raw 2023 and DxO Photo Lab 6. Which one has the better photo manager in 2023? Stick around to find out. So let's start off with pricing. On One Photo Raw 2023 costs 99 US dollars while DxO Photo Lab 6 costs 219 US dollars. We are not going to be discussing the merits of the raw editor in today's video. If you are interested in that aspect, do check out my previous video where I compared the raw editors of On One Photo Raw and DxO Photo Lab. So let's start off with On One Photo Raw 2023. With On One, you can begin immediately browsing photos without first importing as you are required to do when using Lightroom. To browse a folder, click Browse in the left panel. On One has three ways to view your images. Currently, we are in thumbnail view. With On One, you can change the size of any of the panels by dragging on the panel. It has a weird flickering effect though as this is being done. In thumbnail view, you can adjust the size of the thumbnails by moving a slider. Other view modes in On One include a detail view and a film strip view. In film strip view, you can change the size of both the thumbnails and the currently selected image. You can also hide the thumbnails by dragging on the lower panel. Looking at the right panel, the right panel has three tabs. The info tab will show you EXIF information like shutter, aperture, ISO, etc. The nav tab will show you the navigation widget a la Lightroom which allows you to pan around an image. The levels tab will show you the histogram. So as you can see so far, On One's photo browser is definitely feature filled. The main drawback I find with a photo browser though is with the UI design which is too cluttered and overly complicated in my opinion. The small font size also makes text harder to read than competing products. Also the requirement to constantly click tabs to view essential pieces of information like EXIF and histogram could further be simplified. Now let's move on to rating and sorting. As you can see here, On One has multiple ways to sort files. You can sort by date capture, rating, file size, etc. With regards to ratings, On One supports both number ratings and color labels. On One nicely puts ratings and label indicators on its thumbnails. On One supports filtering via ratings, color labels, or text, and this is done for items within the current folder. Now let's move on to search. On One has pretty comprehensive search functionality. You access search by clicking on the search button on the toolbar or by using the shortcut Control F. For now, the only folder that can be searched is the current folder. If you navigate away from that folder and try to perform a search, you will not get any results. Why is that so? Well, that is because the image information has not been stored in On One's database. That is done through cataloging. To catalog a folder, right click on the folder and click Make Cataloged Folder. Once you confirm, the cataloged folder will appear inside the My Catalogs tab. When cataloging is done, 
you can perform the search of any image even if it is not in the current folder as long as it has been cataloged. On one search capabilities are very comprehensive. You can search based on dates, EXIF and IPTC metadata, ratings, file size, you name it, on one supports it. You can search for any terms or all terms. You can search for items greater than, less than, or equal to a particular value, like an ISO, shutter speed, or date. On one supports the saving of search criteria right in the search dialog. In addition, you can create a smart album based on your searches. On one search is not perfect though, and there are some drawbacks. The main drawback is the dialog appearance as a pop-up, which appears right at the middle of the screen. This obscures your view of the search results and is fairly annoying. Better implementations will have the search at the top or corner of the screen. Worse, closing the dialog removes the search results from view. To aid in search and organization, OnOne One supports adding of keywords to your photos. You can add a keyword to multiple files at once by selecting the desired files and typing the keyword in the Add Keyword text box. The keyword you add will be searchable as text. On One supports photo organization through albums. You can create a nested structure by first creating the albums. Then you can drag an album inside another to create whatever hierarchy you desire. Aside from albums, On One automatically organizes photos via dates. You can view images for a particular year, month, or day. I did find that it had some bugs where the number of images shown in the month did not match the number of images shown in days. Okay, so that's it for On One. Now let's move on to DxO Photo Lab 6, starting with photo browsing. One option for folder browsing that is unique to DxO, which I find extremely useful, is that with DxO, you can open an image from Windows File Explorer and DxO will automatically place you in the correct folder, allowing you to browse the rest of the images within that folder. On one, for whatever reason, just opens the photo but won't allow you to browse the enclosing folder. With regards to the browsing experience, I find DxO's user interface more elegantly designed than on ones. It has better looking icons, labels, and widgets. The text is larger and better contrasted with the background, making it more readable. It also has a much less cluttered interface, which is pleasing to view. I also like the fact that you do not need to click a button to view EXIF or histogram information. That being said, DxO's photo browsing is not perfect. It has a glaring weakness, and that's its lack of support for video and iPhone RAW files, both of which On One supports. Staying with the interface, just like On One, DxO allows you to adjust the size of the panels, and it does so without the weird flickering you get when you do the same thing with On One. DxO has only one view, which is a hybrid of a film strip and thumbnail view. Just like On One, DxO supports multiple ways to sort and filter your images. It also supports star ratings and color labels, just like On One. One thing to note about DxO's photo browsing, unlike On One, DxO will automatically catalog, or as DxO calls it, index any folder you browse. With On One, you have to do it manually. You can see here that I can already search any photo whose folder I previously browsed. Just like On One, you also have the option to index a folder manually using this index a folder button. That being said, I much prefer On One's process where you right click the folder and select Make Cataloged Folder. It's much more efficient. As with On One, any indexed folder can be searched using the search text box 
located at the top left panel. I like that in DxO, the search box can be accessed without requiring a button tap, nor does the location of the search box block the user's view of the search results as on one does. DxO search is unique in that whenever text is typed, a drop down automatically appears, which presents you with options on how to search the text. As you can see here, I've typed the file name, but DxO presents a drop down with three options file name, folder, or IPTC metadata. And since I typed the file name, I'll choose the file name option. It's a unique implementation among photo managers, and I think it's designed to reduce the amount of clicks necessary to make a search. I also like the fact that it will preview the number of search results right at the drop down box. DxO search is not perfect though, and its most glaring weakness is it is much more limited and crippled than on ones. While you can do the essentials like searching by file name, EXIF metadata, date, etc., and while DxO also supports multiple search terms, DxO is limited in that multiple search terms always has to be an AND operation. All the criteria have to be met. You cannot do a search where any criteria will be met. Finally, DxO also does not support the creation of smart albums based on search criteria. Similar to On1, DxO supports the adding of a keyword and you can add the keyword to multiple images at a time through the keyword panel. With regards to organization, DxO mainly supports it through albums, which are called projects in DxO. Unlike in On1, where an album can contain either albums or images, in DxO, there are two types of albums, a project container for grouping of albums and a project for storing of images. This allows for hierarchical structures, which On1 can also do, but is more intuitively implemented in DxO. So there you have it. We've just run through the photo management features of both On1 and DxO Photo Lab 6. Which one do I think is better? Despite the many limitations of DxO Photo Lab 6, like its file type support and its limited search capability, I find that its simpler, more elegant UI, intuitive navigation, overcome those limitations and make DxO the better photo manager for my needs. But everybody's requirements are different, so here are some guidelines on whether you should choose On1 or DxO as your photo manager. Choose DxO Photo Lab 6 if you prefer a more intuitive workflow and better design interface. You want easy access to the database. DxO's database holds all the information as a single file, and it is easier to delete the database in DxO as opposed to on one. You don't mind the lack of video or iPhone raw file support in its photo browser. You don't mind its limitations in search. On the other hand, choose on one photo raw if you don't mind its more complicated interface and workflow. You need more comprehensive search capability. You want the ability to create smart albums, which are albums based on search criteria. You prefer the ability to manage catalog folders. In On1, you can actually add or remove catalog folders. In DxO, you cannot. So there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful. Do let me know which photo manager you think was the best, On1 or DxO. And let me know as well what other photo managers you prefer, which are Lightroom alternatives and don't require a subscription. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.